imagine snapping a picture of your friend and watching them spring to life, talking, dancing, or even playing guitar. Sounds impossible, right? That's exactly what OmniHuman One brings to the table. In this video, we'll explore how this model uses a diffusion transformer to blend multiple motion cues, text, audio, and pose into one unified system. From up-close facial expressions to full-body movements, OmniHuman One scales up human animation without sacrificing detail or realism. We'll dive into how it avoids heavy filtering, keeping essential gestures intact, and discuss its Omni Conditions training approach. Let's go. Imagine a system that can take any static human image and bring it to life, animating it into a vivid video with natural gestures, facial expressions, and head movements perfectly synced to an audio track. Sounds like science fiction, right? But that's exactly what OMNIHUMAN1 does. The visuals here show its ability to create lifelike videos where people play instruments, express emotions, or interact with objects. Unlike older models that struggle with scaling to larger datasets or handling varied body proportions, OmniHuman takes a huge leap forward. It trains on mixed motion conditions, allowing it to animate not just close-up portraits, but also half-body and full-body views. Whether it's someone singing, talking, or moving in sync with complex poses, OmniHuman captures these subtleties with incredible fluidity. The abstract sets the stage for the challenge and the solution. Traditional human animation methods, like those driven by audio or pose data, often hit a wall when scaling to general video generation tasks. Why? Because filtering and cleaning the training data strips out essential motion patterns, like gestures or object handling. OmniHuman breaks through this barrier by using a diffusion transformer architecture and mixing various motion-related signals during training. This lets it scale up without losing critical data, enabling more generalizable and flexible video generation. In short, OmniHuman isn't just about generating talking faces. It handles challenging poses, human-object interactions, and different image styles all while making the animations feel dynamic and real. That's what makes it stand out. Now let's zoom out and look at the big picture. Video diffusion models, especially those using transformers, have made massive strides in generating realistic videos. These models learn motion patterns by training on huge data sets. But when it comes to human animation, like making a person in an image talk or move realistically, things get tricky. Existing models rely on heavily filtered data sets, which limit their flexibility. For example, Audio-driven models focus on facial expressions but ignore body poses, while pose-driven models are stuck with front-facing full-body shots. No one had really cracked the challenge of scaling up human animation data while keeping it useful. Enter OmniHuman. Instead of filtering out tons of data, it embraces a mix of different motion cues, text, audio, and pose. This Omni Conditions training has two big advantages, post. First, it saves valuable data that would otherwise be thrown away. Second, it lets weaker conditioning signals, like audio, work alongside stronger ones, like pose, to create richer, more natural motion. The model follows two principles. One, stronger conditions, like pose, can learn from weaker ones, like audio, allowing data reuse. Two, the stronger the condition, the less frequently it needs to be trained to avoid overfitting. OmniHuman builds on a diffusion transformer model and trains across different motion conditions from weak to strong. The result? A model that generates highly realistic human movement across various inputs, aspect ratios, and styles, outperforming existing audio-driven models in both realism and flexibility. Scaling up video generation has always been a challenge but recent advances in diffusion models have made high-quality results possible. One of the key drivers of this progress is the move from smaller, low-resolution datasets to massive, high-resolution video datasets. Instead of relying on heavily filtered data, newer models embrace large-scale, diverse training sets to improve generalization. Some approaches even use 3D compression techniques to make video modeling more efficient. Another shift has been the transition from image-based architectures like UNet to transformer-based models, which helps scale video generation to longer and more dynamic scenes. Human animation is a particularly tough problem within video generation. Older methods used small GAN-based datasets with thousands of videos, but diffusion-based models have now surpassed GANs by training on much larger data. Instead of relying purely on pixels, modern methods use structured data like 2D or 3D body skeletons to drive animation. However, hand quality remains a common problem, leading researchers to use two-stage training pipelines where gesture sequences assist in generating finer details. So how does OmniHuman tackle this? 
It combines multiple conditions, text, audio, and pose to drive motion generation. The model starts with a pre-trained, transformer-based diffusion model and gradually refines it through a three-stage conditioning process. The stronger the motion cue, the less frequently it's used during training to balance learning. This multi-condition strategy allows OmniHuman to scale training data without excessive filtering, making it a more flexible and generalizable solution for human animation. Let's dive into how OmniHuman actually works. It combines multiple inputs, text, images, audio, and pose into a unified system that generates natural-looking human animations. Take a look at figure two here. On the left side, you'll see the Omni Conditions Training Strategy, which gradually introduces different conditions in a multi-stage process. Training starts with just text and images, then adds audio, and finally includes pose information. This progressive strategy helps the model generalize better, rather than overfitting to specific types of motion. On the right side of the figure, you'll see the Omni Human model itself. It's built on a diffusion transformer architecture, where different inputs, text, image, audio, and pose, flow into transformer blocks, helping generate human motion. The model uses cross-attention to align audio features with corresponding frames, and pose features are encoded separately before being merged with the other inputs. Another key feature is appearance conditioning, how the model keeps the subject's identity and background details stable throughout the generated video. Instead of adding extra network layers, it cleverly reuses parts of the existing diffusion transformer model. A technique called rotational position embedding helps separate static and dynamic information, ensuring the generated motion interacts naturally with the given reference image. By the end of training, the model learns to balance different conditioning signals based on their motion correlation strength. Text provides general context, images define appearance, audio guides co-speech gestures, and pose controls detailed movements. This structured approach makes OmniHuman more scalable and flexible than previous methods. Scaling up human animation models isn't as simple as just throwing more data at them. The real challenge is how to integrate multiple conditioning signals, text, image, audio, and pose, so the model learns from them in a structured way. This is where Omni Conditions Training comes in. It's a method that progressively introduces stronger motion-related conditions while ensuring efficient data scaling. Two principles guide the training process. First, stronger conditions can help weaker ones. For example, if pose information is available, it can assist tasks that usually rely only on audio. Second, stronger conditions should be used less frequently since they contain more precise movement details and can dominate learning if overused. This means the model starts by training with text and images, then adds audio, and finally incorporates pose in later stages. Inference works similarly. If the model is generating audio-driven animations, it uses all conditions except pose. For pose-driven videos, audio is turned off so that the model focuses only on motion. The system. The system also uses a tuning method to balance expressiveness and realism, preventing issues like exaggerated wrinkles or unnatural synchronization. The experiments rely on a carefully filtered data set of 18,700 human-related videos with a mix of portrait and full-body clips. Various evaluation benchmarks are used, including lip-sync accuracy and key point detection. Early results show that OmniHuman outperforms existing baselines, delivering more realistic motion in both portrait and full-body settings. Now, let's talk results. OmniHuman isn't just another animation model, it's beating the competition across multiple benchmarks. The numbers here are impressive. First, portrait animation. Compared to models like Sad Talker, Hello, and Loopy, OmniHuman scores higher in image quality and synchronization accuracy while maintaining better fidelity. This means the generated animations not only look clearer, but also sync better with audio input. The same holds for body animation. OmniHuman outperforms models like DiffTed and Cyberhost across all major metrics. One key takeaway is that motion fidelity and synchronization improve significantly with the Omni Conditions training approach. Traditional models rely on a single driver like audio or pose, but OmniHuman integrates multiple signals, leading to more natural-looking human movement. Finally, check out the results on audio conditioning ratios. A 50% audio training ratio delivers the best results, balancing lip-sync accuracy, motion diversity, and realism. Too much audio conditioning results in stiff and unnatural movements, while too little makes animations feel disconnected. The takeaway? OmniHuman's multi-condition training approach is the key to its superior performance. By adjusting training ratios dynamically, it learns to balance synchronization, motion coherence, and image quality better than anything else out there. Getting lip sync right in audio-driven animation isn't just about feeding more data into the model. 
Take a look at figure 3 here. The top row shows a model trained with only 10% audio data, the middle with 50%, and the bottom with 100%. When too little audio data is used, the lip movements don't fully align with the spoken sounds. But when the model is trained with too much audio conditioning, it overfits, resulting in rigid, exaggerated movements that look unnatural. The sweet spot? A 50% audio training ratio. It strikes the right balance between realism and flexibility, ensuring lip movements match speech without losing fluidity. The study also explores how the reference image training ratio affects animation quality. When too little reference image data is used, errors accumulate, causing artifacts like increased noise and background color shifts. On the flip side, when too much reference image data is used, the audio-driven motion becomes weaker, making it harder to maintain accurate lip syncing. These findings reinforce a core idea. Balancing training ratios is crucial for generating high-quality, natural-looking human animations. Pose-driven animation is all about balance, too. Take a look at figures 4 and 5 here. They illustrate two different settings, portrait animation and full-body animation. In portrait animation, models trained with only 20% pose conditioning struggle with hand coordination, leading to less expressive gestures. The 50% pose condition ratio gives the best results, where hand motions naturally align with speech. But with 80% pose conditioning, gestures become stiff and repetitive, as the model relies too much on pose data and loses flexibility. A similar trend appears in full-body animation. At low pose ratios, movement is weak and inconsistent. At high pose ratios, the model forces poses too aggressively, making animations look mechanical. Again, 50% pose training strikes the right balance, preserving fluidity while maintaining control. The takeaway? More pose data isn't always better. A moderate amount ensures animations stay natural, expressive, and adaptable. Whether it's hand gestures in portrait animations or full body motion in complex scenes. How much influence should the reference image have in generating an animation? Figure 6 answers that question. When the reference image ratio is too low, animations lose detail, causing color shifts, background noise, and identity mismatches. But when the reference ratio is too high, it restricts motion flexibility, making the generated animation less dynamic. The key takeaway? A balanced reference ratio is crucial for preserving identity while keeping movement natural. Now, check out Figure 7. This is where things get really exciting. OmniHuman doesn't just work with realistic human faces. It can bring stylized 3D models, cartoon characters, and even inanimate objects to life. The examples here show a robotic-looking face, an elderly woman, a puppet-like creature, a set of animated blue fruits with faces, and anime characters. These results prove that OmniHuman isn't limited to photorealistic humans. It can animate a broad range of characters while maintaining expressive, natural motion, making it highly adaptable for creative and entertainment applications. In short, this page highlights two key insights. First, balancing reference image influence is critical for animation quality. Second, OmniHuman can push the boundaries of animation beyond realistic humans, making it an exciting tool for various artistic and media projects. OmniHuman isn't just about making human animations look better. It's about expanding what's possible in the field. The extended visual results section emphasizes that many of OmniHuman's advantages can't be captured through standard metrics. The model handles diverse input images while preserving the original subject's motion style, meaning it doesn't just generate movement, but also respects the way someone naturally moves. It also excels in object interaction, generating natural movements when a subject is playing an instrument or gesturing while speaking. Because it supports pose-driven and audio-driven motion, it can generate animations in different styles and levels of expressiveness, making it more flexible than previous models. The conclusion sums it all up. OmniHuman is an end-to-end, -end, multimodal human animation framework that can generate high-quality videos from text, audio, or pose-based signals. Unlike older methods that rely on heavily filtered datasets, OmniHuman scales efficiently using its OmniConditions training strategy, allowing it to learn from diverse motion patterns while maintaining realism. It significantly improves animation quality across portrait, half-body, and full-body scenarios, setting a new standard for natural, data-driven human motion generation. Ultimately, OmniHuman isn't just a step forward, it's a demonstration of how integrating multiple motion signals can overcome traditional limitations and create highly realistic, adaptable human animations. Thanks for joining us on this deep dive. Happy learning and stretching together.